Hello everybody, I hope you are all well and that you're all enjoying the story. We are already on chapter 7 and chapter 7 is called The Runaway Chair. Now, again like what we've done with the other chapters when Tinky was a bit lost, this chapter gives you a big clue about what might happen in the story. So The Runaway Chair. So have a little think just now with an adult about what it means, that runaway means. If something's to run away, what does that mean? Because that might help you to guess what's going to happen, okay? But we'll get started. And I think there's also a lovely picture in this chapter that I can share with you all as well, okay? So let's get comfortable and get ready for chapter seven. The runaway chair. One morning, when the two children went down to their playroom to have a game with Chinky the Pixie, they found him fast asleep. Wake up, cried Peter, trying to roll him over. But Chinky didn't wake up. He was breathing very deeply and he had quite nice red cheeks. He was okay, but he just wouldn't wake up. What's the matter with him? said Molly, a bit puzzled. Oh, he's just pretending, said Peter. I'll go and get a wet sponge. He'll soon wake up if that's on his face. But even the wet sponge didn't wake him up. There must be a spell or something on him, said Molly, getting a bit worried. Oh, what shall we do, Peter? If only we knew where to get help. But we can't tell anyone about Chinky the Pixie. He's a secret. Oh, and he'd be so cross when we woke up if he knew that we'd gave away a secret and exposed him to everybody. And we don't know how to find any fairies, or we could have asked them for help. Suddenly, the wishing chair gave a creak, and Molly looked round. It's growing its wings, she cried. Oh, don't let it fly away, Peter. We don't want another adventure without Chinky. He has to come. Peter ran to the chair, but it dodged him and flew straight out the door. Its wings started flapping swiftly. Peter stared at it. Oh no. Oh Peter, said Molly, isn't this dreadful? Here's Chinky the Pixie under a spell and now the chairs run away. Oh, what an unlucky day this is. Well, it's gone, said Peter. Now what are we going to do about Chinky the Pixie, Molly? Just then, there came the sound of a cautious little tiptoe. Peter turned just in time to see an ugly goblin slipping out of the door. I put him under the sleepy spell, shouted the goblin. I meant to steal the chair before he woke up, but you came. Now I'm going to have to find the chair. If you don't find the way to wake up that pixie before 12 o'clock tonight, he will vanish altogether. Ho, ho. What a horrid thing, said Molly, as the goblin disappeared into the garden. I suppose he'll go after our chair and have it for himself now. And here's poor Chinky left in a magic sleep. And if we don't wake him up before 12 o'clock, if only we knew a fairy might help us. Well, I could go and try and call for one in the garden, said Peter. So he went out and called softly here and there. Fairies! If you're there, can you come and help us? But he had no answer at all. And he went sadly back to the playroom where Molly sat by the sleeping pixie. Oh, it's no good, said Peter. I didn't see a single fairy. I really don't know what to do. If only we had the chair, we could go off and find a fairy to help us, said Molly. But even the chair's gone, left us. It's run away in the very day that we need its help the most. They went back to the house for dinner and for tea. And Mother exclaimed at their long faces. She was confused. They very nearly told her about Chinky. But they didn't want to. They had promised the pixie never to mention his name to grown-ups. They didn't know what they would think. When it was their bedtime, Chinky the pixie was still asleep. 
hasn't had anything to eat all day, said Molly. Well, Peter, do you really think he'll disappear at midnight if we can't wake him up? We must wake him up, said Peter. So he got two drums and two trumpets, and he and Molly made as much noise as they ever could until Jane, the housemaid who lives with them, was sent down the garden to stop them. But Jinky still didn't even wake. Then they poured cold water down his neck, but that only made him a bit wet. He didn't even flicker. Then they found a hen's feather. And they tickled him. That didn't work either. He slept on peacefully. A bell rang in the distance. Oh dear, there's our bedtime bell, said Molly in dismay. Peter, I'm coming back to the playroom at some point tonight. There must be something we can do. We've tried everything, said Peter. And he looked very miserable. They went off to bed, first covering up Jinky to keep him warm. In an hour's time, they were back again in their dressing gowns. They'd slipped out of bed, run to the garden door and go into the playing room without being seen. Jinky was still fast asleep. Molly looked at the clock. Oh, half past eight, she said. Oh dear. They tried to think of more ways to wake him up than sleeping pixie and Molly squeezed a sponge over his head with ice cold water and then with some hot water. But neither of them worked. The hands of the clock went round and round and at last it was only ten minutes till midnight. Oh, the children didn't know what to do. Suddenly, there came a curious sound of knocking at the door. It sounded more like kicking. Peter ran to it. Outside was their wishing chair. It was soaked through due to the rain. It had found the door shut and kicked at it with one of its legs. Sitting in the chair was a jolly faced gnome with a silvery beard and an enormous nose, two pairs of spectacles and a large umbrella to keep off the rain. Who are you? asked Peter. Oh, don't bother him with questions, said Molly. He's a fairy of some sort. Maybe he's come to make Chinky feel better. And if I just stop there very quickly and show you the picture on this page. This is a picture of someone arriving at the door. So you can see there we've got Molly and Peter peeking out the, the door of the playroom. And there's the wishing chair arrived back with a special character. A special guest has turned up. Who do they think it could be? Yes, said the gnome, putting on a third pair of glasses. This chair knew where I lived and flew 133 miles to fetch me. I am only just in time. There are only seven minutes till midnight, said Molly. Please be quick. The little gnome doctor rolled up his sleeves. He took a towel and a piece of soap and then he washed Jinky's face very carefully. On both sides. Then he brushed the sleeping pixie's eyes with some air and then he took a peacock's feather and dusted them down. He put a peculiar smelling yellow ointment on them too. Oh do hurry said Molly it's almost midnight the clock's going to strike. It's one minute fast said the doctor. He took a big black ball from the air, opened it and put a blue powder inside it. He struck a match with light and put it to the black ball and there was a huge explosion in the room. The playroom rocked and shook, smoke everywhere. It didn't smell very nice. When it cleared away, the two children saw, to their delight, that Jinky was sitting up. He was awake. 
and looking astonished. Who made that horrible noise? he said. Hello, Doctor. What are you doing here? Just going, so goodbye, grinned the little gnome. See you someday. And he jumped into the wishing chair, which at once flew off with him again. Chinky the Pixie ran his finger around his collar and frowned. Why am I all wet? he asked. Oh, Chinky, please don't be cross, asked Molly. We were quite worried about you. A goblin put you under a sleepy spell and the clever wishing chair went to fetch that gnome doctor. Just in time, he fixed you and made you wake up. Oh, so that's it, is it? No wonder I feel so hungry. I've been asleep all day. Can you find me anything to eat? I think we've got some rolls and some apples in the cupboard, said Peter, delighted to see Chinky awake again. Oh, we'll have a fine feast tonight. And so they did. And they didn't go back to bed until the morning. No wonder they slept late the next morning. They had been up all night having a feast. Chinky didn't know. He was up bright and early. He had enough of sleep and didn't need any more. And that is the end of that chapter. So, that is interesting because when I saw the chapter named The Runaway Chair, I was thinking that the chair had been a bit tricky or a bit, you know, trying to do a little trick on the children and run away. Um, to go somewhere that on an adventure on its own. But actually, the chair was being kind, and he knew, the chair knew that Pixie needed some help and went to get the gnome doctor. What a lovely thing to do. I want you to have a think. How do you think the wishing chair knew where the gnome doctor would be? How do you think he knew where to find him and who would help Pixie? Can you have a think? Do you think that the wishing chair has seen the gnome doctor before? Who knows? Have a little think and you can let me know. And I will see you back in the next chapter. Okay? So enjoy and I'll see you very soon. Bye.